Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Hello everyone, my name is Tạ Thảo. Hello dear friends, my name is Nhật Minh. Các bạn và các em học sinh thân mến, chúng ta đã đi được gần một nửa của hành trình chinh phục tiếng Anh và khóa học tiếng Anh online căn bản của Trung tâm Ngoại ngữ Công ty Kỳ Long Biên, Hà Nội. Trong các bài học trước, các bạn đã lĩnh hội rất nhiều kiến thức về đại tử, danh tử, mạng tử, tính tử, trạng tử, cũng như luyện phát âm tiếng Anh. Trong phần sau của khóa học, chúng mình sẽ tập trung giải thích cặn kẽ và thấu đáo cho các bạn cách sử dụng động từ trong tiếng Anh. Động từ là từ loại có hình vị ngữ, một trong hai thành phần chính của một câu. Động từ trong tiếng Anh cũng rất rắc rối về mặt ngữ pháp, cho nên việc hiểu rõ cách sử dụng động từ là hết sức quan trọng. Trong bức tranh quen thuộc, cậu bé và chú chó dũng cảm, động từ là các từ được hiển thị với màu hồng. Các bài học về động từ sẽ xoay quanh các chủ đề chính khái quát như sau. Định nghĩa, các loại động từ, ngoài động từ, nội động từ, động từ có quy tắc và bất quy tắc, trợ động từ, động từ thường, cụm động từ, các thì của động từ và dạng bị động. Đầu tiên định nghĩa, definition. Động từ, verb là từ hoặc cụm từ được dùng để miêu tả hành động, action hoặc trạng thái, state. Mục 2, các loại động từ, kinds of verbs. Dựa trên các tiêu chí khác nhau, động từ có thể được phân thành nhiều loại. Một nhỏ, ngoại động từ và nội động từ Transitive and intransitive verb Một chấm một, ngoại động từ Transitive verb Diễn tả hành động tác động trực tiếp lên người hoặc vật nào đó Và cách khác, ngoại động từ là động từ thường được theo sau bởi danh từ hoặc đại từ là tân ngữ trực tiếp Direct object For example, let's invite Sally Chúng ta hãy mời Sally đi Chúng ta không nói là let's invite Hoặc you surprise me anh đã làm tôi ngạc nhiên. Chúng ta cũng không nói là you surprised. Động từ invite và surprise sẽ không đủ nghĩa nếu không có danh từ Sally và đại từ be làm tân ngữ. Một chấm hai nội động từ intransitive verb diễn tả hành động dừng lại ở người nói hoặc người thực hiện hành động đó hoặc nói cách khác. Nội động từ là động từ không cần có tân ngữ trực tiếp, danh từ hoặc đại từ theo sau. For example, do sit down. Hãy ngồi xuống. The children are playing hoặc trẻ đang chơi đùa. Động từ sit và play không cần có tân ngữ trực tiếp cũng đã đủ nghĩa. Một số lưu ý, vì nhiều động từ có thể vừa là ngoại động từ vừa là nội động từ và nghĩa của chúng có thể thay đổi. À, sau đây là một số ví dụ. Cố bên trái là nội động từ, cố bên phải là ngoại động từ. For example, we lost, chúng tôi đã thua. We lost the match, chúng tôi đã thua trận đấu. He ran as fast as he could. Anh ta sẽ chạy nhanh hết, hết sức. He has no idea how to run a business. Anh ấy không biết cách quản lý một doanh nghiệp. Flowers grow in the garden. Hoa mọc trong vườn. They grow flowers in the garden. Họ trồng hoa trong vườn. The door seemed to open it by itself. She looked for her key and opened the door. Lưu ý tiếp theo, mọi động từ có thể có hai tân ngữ. Tân ngữ trực tiếp direct object và tấn ngữ gián tiếp indirect object For example My friend has just sent me a postcard or my friend has just sent a postcard to me Ở đây, direct object là postcard và indirect object là me Lưu ý tiếp theo là tấn ngữ theo sau nội động từ thường là tấn ngữ của giới từ prepositional object chứ không phải là tấn ngữ trực tiếp của động từ For example We walked across the fields. Chúng tôi đi qua cánh đồng. Ở đây, the fields là tân ngữ của giới từ và across the field là trạng từ. Let's talk about your pet, your plan. Chúng ta hãy nói về kế hoạch của anh đi. Birds fly in the sky. Chim bay trên trời. The cup fell from her hand and broke. The young boy looked at his watch and he started to run faster. Lưu ý cuối cùng là một số ngoại động từ có thể được theo sau bởi một tân ngữ và một bổ ngữ của tân ngữ Verb, Object, Object Complement Bổ ngữ của tân ngữ thường là tính từ, danh từ hoặc danh ngữ For example, I find her attitude strange Tôi thấy thái độ của cô ta rất lạ They elected him president Họ bầu ông ấy làm chủ tịch But that boy regards him Sorry. That boy regards Bill as his father Cậu bé đó xem Bill Kim Cha Tiêu chí phân loại thứ hai là động từ được chia thành động từ có quy tắc và động từ bất quy tắc 
regular and irregular verbs phần thứ nhất là động từ có quy tắc regular verbs là động từ có hình thức quá khứ đơn simple past và quá khứ phân từ past participle được thành lập bằng cách thêm hậu từ ed và động từ nguyên mẫu infinitive for example infinitive là to work thì past là word và past participle cũng là word uh, to invite là invited và invited study 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 and bed bed là bed phần thứ hai là động từ bất quy tắc irregular verbs là động từ có hình thức quá khứ đơn và quá khứ phân từ được thành lập không theo quy tắc nhất định nào hình thức quá khứ đơn và quá khứ phân từ của các động từ này nằm trong bảng động từ bất quy tắc mà người học phải học thuộc lòng đồng. học thuộc lòng bảng động từ bất quy tắc for example infinitive là to be past the words of word past participle be uh, infinitive to see past là so và past participle là see Teach, touch, touch and give, give và given. Còn đây là bảng động từ bất quy tắc mà người học phải học thuộc lòng. Here we have a few examples of verbs with opposite meanings. We go when the traffic light is green. We stop when the traffic light is red light. I sleep at night. I wake up in the morning. He lived until he was 80 years old. He died in the war. People push their shopping cart around the supermarket. The tow truck pulled the car behind. A boat floats on water. Let sinks when it's dropped into the water. The room is cooled by the air conditioner. Food can be heated in the microwave. We throw the ball to the dog. The dog likes to catch the ball in his mouth. I want to pass my examination. I failed the test because all my answers were wrong. I teach English to the students in my class. My students learn a lot. While you are waiting, you can sit on that chair. The car was standing next to the door. The snow falls on the ground. The sun rises in the east. It was so cold, I decided to put on a sweater. You should take off the shoes me before you go to bed. This picture illustrates daily routines. Learn the verbs and expressions shown here to denote everyday actions at home. Try to construct complete sentences with them. Wake up. Get up. Take a shower, brush your teeth, shave, brush your hair, wash your face, dry off, get dressed, make the bed, watch TV, listen to music, get undressed, go to bed. Action verbs, stated verbs, and verbs that are both. Action verbs or dynamic verbs are verbs that describe actions. We can use them in the simple or continuous forms. Here are a few examples of action verbs. Walk. Every day I walk home from class. I'm walking to the store right now. Read. I read mostly historical fiction. I've been reading a novel that takes place during the colonial times. Help. My sister helps me with my homework. My father is helping me learn how to drive. Watch. Bob watches four hours of TV every night. Last night, he got angry at me because I changed the channel while he was watching his favorite show. Stative verbs. Stative verbs or state verbs describe a status or quality of something not an action. Verbs are perception, opinion, the senses, emotion, perceptions, and state of being are often stated verbs. Stated verbs cannot be used in the continuous forms. Here are some examples. Stated verbs are opinion or perception, know, believe, understand, recognize, refer, agree or disagree, Approve, disapprove, 
suppose, suspect. For example, I've known my best friend since childhood. Don't say I have been knowing my best friend since childhood. We agree with you. Don't say we are agreeing with you. Study verbs or possession. Have, own, belong, possess, include, own. For example, I have a bicycle. Don't say I have a bicycle. This book belongs to the teacher. Don't say this book is belonging to the teacher. Stated verbs are the senses. Hear, smell, see, feel, appear, see, resemble. For example, I hear some music playing. Don't say I'm hearing some music playing. Verbs that can be both dynamic and stative verbs. Some verbs can function as both action verbs and stative verbs. Here are some examples. B. Stative. He is immature. He is always immature. Action. He is being immature. He is temporarily acting immature. Have. Stative. Possession. I have a car. He has a dog. Action. Expressions with have, like I'm having breakfast, eating breakfast. He's having fun, experiencing fun. Double objects verbs. Some verbs have two objects, an indirect objects and a direct objects. My wife sent me an email. He brought his mother some flowers. He cooked all his friend a delicious meal. These clauses have the structure verb plus noun, indirect object plus noun, direct object. Alternatively, we can use prepositional phrase with to or for with an indirect object. My wife sent an email to me. He brought some flour for his mother. He cooked a delicious meal for all his friends. These clauses have the structure verb plus noun, direct object plus two or four plus noun, indirect object. Common verbs with two and an indirect objects are give, lend, offer, pass, post, promise, read, sell, send, show, tell, write. He gave his program to the man next to him. He gave the man next to him his program. They send Christmas cards to all their customers. They sent all their customers' Christmas cards. Common words with for and an indirect objects are book, bring, buy, cook, find, get, keep, make, pour, save. They book a table for me at the restaurant. They book me a restaurant they book me a table at the restaurant. We made toys for all the children. We made all the children toys. If the indirect objects is a long phrase, we normally use two or four. He showed his ticket to the policeman standing by the door. We keep some we kept something to eat and drink for all the people who arrived late. If the indirect object is a pronoun, we normally use the verb plus now plus now pattern. We poured him another drink. Their mother read them another story. Placement of direct and indirect objects. For most verbs in English, including give, lend, mail, offer, sell, send, show, 
teach and how direct and indirect objects follow these patterns. Pattern A. Direct object plus two plus indirect object. Stores mail flyers to customers. Stores mail flyers to them. Or pardon me, indirect object plus direct object. Stores mail customers flyers. Stores mail them flyers. With verbs such as announce, describe, explain, mention, provide, recommend, return, and say, the indirect object cannot precede the direct object. Sentences follow part in A above. They will announce a big sale to customers by email. With verbs such as allow, ask, cause, and cost, the indirect object precedes the direct object and takes no preposition. Sentences follow part in B above. It only costs Rick two dollars. It only costs me two dollars. Now we use the app AMD to look up the grammatical explanation of verbs. Verb. In syntax, a verb is a word, part of speech, that usually denotes an action, like bring or read, an occurrence, decompose, glitter, or a state of being, exist, stand. Depending on the language, a verb may vary in form according to many factors, possibly including its tense, aspect, mood, and voice. It may also agree with the person, gender, and or number of some of its arguments, like subject, object, etc. Valency. The number of arguments that a verb takes is called its valency or valence. Verbs can be classified according to their valency. Intransitive. Valency equals one. The verb only has a subject. For example, he runs, it falls. Transitive. Valency equals two. The verb has a subject and a direct object. For example, she eats fish, we hunt deer. Linking, valency equals three. State of being does not require an action. The subject, the subject complements are related to subject rather than the verb. It simply reports a condition or asks a questions about a condition. English verbs are often flexible with regard to valency. A transitive verb can often drop its object and become intransitive, or an intransitive verb can take an object and become transitive. Compare, I moved, I moved the book. In the first example, the verb move has no grammatical object. In this case, there may be an object understood. The object, like I, myself, the verb is then possibly reflexive rather than intransitive. In the second, the, the object, in the second, the subject and object are distinct. The verb has a different valency, but the form remains exactly the same. Copula. A copula is a word that is used to describe its subject. In many languages, copulas are a special kind of verb, sometimes called copulative verbs or linking verbs. Because copulas do not describe actions being performed, they are usually analyzed outside the transitive or intransitive distinction. The most basic copula in English is to be. There are others, remain, seem, grow, become, etc. Verbal noun and verbal adjective. Most languages have a number of verbal nouns that describe the action of the verb. In Indo-European languages, there are several kinds of verbal nouns, including gerunds, infinitives, and supines. 
English has gerunds such as seeings and infinitives such as to see. They both can function as nouns. Seeing is believing is roughly equivalent in meaning with to see is to believe. These terms are sometimes applied to verbal nouns or non-Indo-European languages. In the Indo-European languages, verbal adjectives are generally called participles. English has an active participle, also called a present participle, and a passive participle, also called a past participle. The active participle of play is playing, and the passive participle is played. The active participle describes nouns that performs the action given in the verb. For example, I saw the playing children. The passive participle describes nouns that have been the object of the action of the verb. For example, I saw the played game scattered across the floor. Agreement. In languages where the verb is inflected, it often agrees with its primary argument, what we tend to call the subject in person, number, and or gender. English only shows in distinctive agreement in the third person singular, present tense form of verbs, which is marked by adding S. The rest of the persons are not distinguished in the verb, Về hội thoại của chúng ta ngày hôm nay là shopping để mua sắm. When you ask a sales associate, excuse me, do you work here? Yes, I do. Can I help you find something? Can you help me? Sure. Are you looking for anything in particular? Can I ask you something? Sure. How can I help you? When you look for items in a supermarket, do you carry low-fat milk? Dairy products are in the edge number eight. Where is ice cream? There is a large refrigerator on the other side of the store. Please look there. Where will I find apples? Apples are in the produce department. When you are just looking at not purchasing. Is there anything I can help you with? No thanks, I'm just looking. If you need me, I'll be right there. May I help you? No thanks, I'm only looking. Are you looking for something in particular? No, I'm just browsing. Thanks anyway. When you ask a particular question about merchandise, do you have something less expensive? Yes, I've got exactly what you're looking for. Follow me please. Do you have this in a larger size? Yes, we do. Here, try it on. Do you have this in red? Yes, we do. Do you need anything else to go with that? When you ask about prices, how much does this cost? It's $19.95. Okay, I'll take it. How much are these? They are $3.75 each. Wow, that's too expensive. How much is this dress? That one is $7.95. How about this one? When you cannot make a right choice in the store, I just can't make up my mind, or I cannot make a decision. Your store has a good selection, I just can't make up my mind. If you need help, I'll be right there. I'm not sure which one I like. They have a red store. They have a short one in red and a long one in green. I'm not sure which one I like. When you want to try on clothes, I want to try this dress on for size. There's a mirror over there. I like to try this suit on. The fitting rooms are over there. Where is the fitting room? The woman's fitting room is located near the escalator. When you are not satisfied with an item, it's too expensive. I like this dress, but I'm afraid my husband won't approve my purchase. It's too expensive. Or, it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. I saw a similar dress on sale at half price in another department. 
I don't like the color. Sorry, we don't have it in, in other colors. If there's anything else I can get for you? Smart shoppers, how do you find the best bargains? Rick, 24 years old. I'm really into online options. Members sell each other all kinds of stuff. I really get excited about the bidding. Sometimes there's lots of competition, but sometimes you're the only bidder. See this hat? It only costs me $2. Color, 32 years old. When you go shopping, I use this school sale collector app. It provides information about in-store sales to bargain hunters free of charge. The app collects, the app collects information from thousands of stores, and you can also send information about deals you find to other shoppers. Norma, 21 years old. Do you get tired of clothes quickly? Do you always want to buy something new for yourself? Let me give you a tip. I buy secondhand clothes at a thrift. I buy secondhand clothes at thrift shops. I can always find something I like, even designer brands, at a greatly reduced price. Lingue, 43 years old. For food and everyday items, I recommend wholesale clubs to everyone I know. For small membership fee, you can go to a big warehouse like store that sells everything in bulk, in large quantities, the rule there is the more you buy, the more you save. Sau đây chúng ta thực hành hội thoại trên máy tính, chủ đề số 11, shopping, việc mua sắm. Yes, madam, can I have you? Yes, please. Yesterday, my daughter bought this skirt from this shop. I'd like to change it. Here, I've got the receipt. What's the problem? I'm afraid it doesn't fit. It's a size 12, and it's too small. Mm, then perhaps you ought to try a size 14. What can I do for you, miss? Yes, I would like a pair of shoes. What color, please? Could you show me some different styles and colors? Of course, here you are. Could you recommend a good quality? How do you like this pair? They're my most popular line. Oh, they're too small. How about that pair? It just fits me very well. It looks pretty on you. How much do I owe you? That will be $50. Can you come down a little? I'm afraid that's the best we can do. Okay, please have them grab it for me. Right away, is there anything else you might need? This will be all for the moment. Here you are. Thank you so much for your kindness. Don't mention it. May I help you, sir? I'm looking for a necktie, something of silk. What color did you have in mind? Well, something that will go with a light gray suit. I believe this one would go well with a gray suit. Oh, I'm afraid that's too loud. Don't you have something more conservative? Perhaps this one would do. Yes, that's more like it. I will take it. What else are you going to buy? I want to get a man's shirt. What size do you wear? Medium. How do you like this one? It looks nice. Can I try it on? Sure, the dressing room is right over there. 
the size is right now. Do you have the means choice? May I suggest something in checks? They seem to be more popular this year. This will be fine. How much are they? They are $1,000. Well, they are a little more than I wanted to pay. Listen to interviews with two immigrants to the United States. Where are they from? Hui. Where are you from originally, Hui? I'm from Vietnam, from the Hanoi. And when did you move here? I came here after I graduated from college. That was in 1998. And what do you do now? I work for a communications company. I see. So you're an immigrant to the United States. That's right. What are some of the difficulties of being an immigrant in the U.S.? Oh, that's not an easy question to answer. There are so many things, really. I guess one of the biggest difficulties is that I don't have any relatives here. I mean, I have a lot of friends, but that's not the same thing. In Vietnam, we visit relatives on holidays and weekends. It's not the same here. And what do you miss the most from home? Oh, that's easy. My mom's cooking. There are some great Vietnamese restaurants here. But it's not the same as my mother's cooking. Ahmed, where are you from, Ahmed? I'm from Egypt. And when did you move to the U.S.? In 2005. Are you studying here at the moment? Not now. I moved here to attend college. And after I graduated, I got a job here. I'm working as an engineer. Uh-huh. And what was it like when you first came here? Was it difficult? Yeah, it was at times. The biggest difficulty I had was with the educational system. Things are very different here. Teaching methods. Everything is very different from what I was used to in Egypt. And what do you miss the most in Egypt? My family and my friends. I try to go home often, but it's expensive to go back. I have some friends coming to visit next month, so I'm really looking forward to that. Ten simple ways to beat the heat this summer. A heat wave is rolling through southern British Columbia this weekend, with some areas expecting to hit 40 degrees Celsius. For all my friends south of the border, that's around 104 degrees Fahrenheit for humidity. Nothing like kicking off summer vacation with an urgent need to beat the heat. Despite the sweltering heat, I'm still absolutely determined to keep things simple. Or maybe because of it, I'm more determined. Either way, I thought I'd share my 10 simple ways to beat the heat this summer. I have a list of my to-go ways to beat the heat. It's not complex, it's just a few things I've learned over the years that seem to really work. Have your coffee hot. Iced coffee may come all the range this time of year. There's such a yummy way to cool down, but don't ditch the hot coffee or tea quite so fast. Depending on where you live, a hot drink might actually have you cool down faster than a cold drink. If you live somewhat, somewhere dry, where your sweat can evaporate. This tip is for you. If you live somewhere humid, stick to those iced coffees. Turn down the hot water and postpone that morning shower. Skip the morning shower if you can in favor of, some, of one later in the afternoon or before bed. And turn down the hot water. Go for a loop room. It should feel cooling, not frigid. Keep the air circulating. Whether you have ceiling fans or portable fans, keep the air slow moving in the house. Stagnant air can make the heat feel worse, but air that is moving helps break it up. If you have central air or run window air conditioners, fans can also help move the cool air around better. It's a little thing, but it's really work. Close those windows. I love nothing more than sunlight coming in through the windows. But windows that get a lot of sun, especially in the heat of the day, are not helping keeping the house cool. I close the windows and the curtains on theme to help block out the heat. And it really does work. Now, if there is a fabulous breeze coming from that side of the house, I'll leave the windows open, but still close the curtains mostly. Keeping the heat from coming in 
is easier to deal with than trying to keep the heat out of the house. Get out of the heat. When the temperature is at its peak for the day, plan some inside activities. This is a great time for board games, crafts, building a blanket, fort, and reading. Or maybe even just chilling out watching a movie. Peak time varies in location. Fourth is usually between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., which is kind of perfect because I have some fun with the kids before it's time for the dinner rush. Hats, sunscreen, and plenty of water. If you can beat the heat at least, be prepared for it, and practice heat and sun safety. Wear a hat, preferably a light color to reflect the heat. Here, use a good sunscreen and bring plenty of water with you. I keep a few half-filled water bottle in the freezer, so that we, when we are he heading out for the day, I can wipe them out. Top up with cold water, and they tend to stay cold when while they are out. For additional comfort, wear light colored, light weight fabrics that breath to allow your body to cool itself down. Bridges, pools, and water parks. I may not always want to go, but if you have a beach, pool or water park in your area, heading out for some fun in the uh, heading out for some fun in the water can be a great way to beat the heat. To beat the heat. Just make sure to follow the advice above and be sure to have a wonderful time. Trust me, heat truck and sun truck are not something you want to take lightly. Water parks and beaches tend to free options in our areas, which is always nice. If you exclude paid parking, but sometimes a pool can be just as much fun. More if it happens to be in your own or a friend's backyard. Bây giờ chúng ta sử dụng ứng dụng AMD để tra nghĩa một số từ có trong bài đọc hiểu. Từ đầu tiên là từ heat. Nếu là danh từ, từ heat có nghĩa là hơi nóng, sức nóng, cảm giác nóng, là nhiệt, heat barrier, rào cản nhiệt, heat capacity, công suất nhiệt, là thời tiết nóng, sự nóng bức, sự nóng nực, trạng thái bùng bừng của cơ thể, là lò sưởi ở trong nhà. The heat was on when we returned from work. Là sự nồng nhiệt, sự hăng hái, the heat of youth, sự sôi nổi của tuổi trẻ, cơn giận dữ, sự nóng này, in the heat of the moment trong lúc giận dữ thời điểm gai gắt căng thẳng nhất the heat of battle từ heat còn có hai compound là heat stroke và heat wave heat stroke là sự say nóng sự lả đi vì nóng sự say nóng heat wave là đợt khí hậu nóng đợt nóng là sóng nhiệt sau đây chúng ta tập trung trang nghĩa của từ beat Đầu tiên khi beat là động từ thì quá khứ của beat là beat, quá khứ phân từ là beaten hoặc beat. Nó có nghĩa là đánh, đập, nện, đập vào, đánh đập, to beat somebody, black and blue, đánh ai thâm tím mình mẩy. The, the dog was beaten to death. Con chó bị đánh đến chết. Who's beating the drum? Ai đang đánh trống vậy? Somebody is beating at the door. Có người đang đập cửa. She's beating the carpet. Beating the dust off the carpet Bài đăng đập tấm thảm cho sạch Đăng đập bụi thảm Hillstones beat against the window Những hòn mưa đá đập vào cửa sổ Từ beat còn có nghĩa là gò, cán, rèn, rắt mỏng Beaten silver To beat metal flat là đập dẹp kim loại To beat the glowing metal into a dagger có nghĩa là đánh bại, đánh thắng, chiến thắng hoặc thắng. Our team was easily beaten. Đội chúng tôi bị đánh bại dễ dàng. He beat me in the race. Có nghĩa là hơn, trội hơn, vượt. Nothing beats home cooking. Không gì hơn nấu ăn ở nhà. 
Còn có nghĩa là làm bối rối, làm dối trí, là điều bí ẩn. A problem that beats even the experts. Một vấn đề khiến các các chuyên gia cũng phải bối rối. It beats me. I don't know the answer. Có nghĩa là đến trước, làm xong trước. I'll beat you to the top of the hill. Tôi sẽ đến đỉnh đồi trước anh. Có nghĩa là tránh. We left early so that we could beat the traffic. Nghĩa là khuấy mạnh hoặc đánh. To beat the eggs up to a frothy consistency. Là đánh chứng đến độ sền sệt sủi bọt. Nói về tim mạch là nở ra và co lại nhịp nhàng. Đập, đập mạnh. He's alive. His heart is still beating. Là vỗ hoặc đập cánh. To beat the wings. Nói với chim là bộ cánh. The bird wings were beating frantically. Còn khi là danh từ, từ beat có nghĩa cú đánh, cú đập, tiếng đập, cái gõ trống, tiếng gõ trống, tiếng vỗ, tiếng sóng vỗ. The beat of a drum. Là sự co bóp, sự đập, nhịp đập. Heartbeats. He could hear the beat of his heart. Là nhịp điệu, là nhịp, tiết điệu, nhịp mạch. Tiết tấu, tiết tấu mạnh, nhịp đánh. The glissando begins on the second beat. Music with a Latin beat. Là khu vực tuần tra, khu vực đi tuần, khu vực đảm trách. Còn bây giờ là một số câu. Còn bây giờ là một số ví dụ câu với động từ beat. His stepfather used to beat him. He was arrested for beating his wife. Whenever she refused, he'd beat her black and blue. They threatened to beat the living daylights out of him, or to beat him very badly. The other two reached out and pulled the Aussie from the river and then, using long clubs, beat the shark to death. A 31-year-old man was beaten with a golf club and suffered severe bruising and two punctured wounds in his back. He was tied to a telegraph pole in a field on the outskirts of Cork City where he was repeatedly beaten by a gang of up to five men. One of the victims, a UK reporter, was held down by the night by one officer while the others beat him with clubs. The waves were beating on or against the shore. La sóng vỗ vào bờ. No object. Sydney bit. Sydney beat on the floor with the flat of his hand. Emmy began to beat at the flames. The rain was beating on window panes. Instead, Cindy was stuck staring gloomingly out the window as rain steadily beat against it. Five minutes later, we were cruising down the highway with the wind beating roughly against the side of the car and ruffling our hair. To beat a drum, đánh chống, khua chống, with object, the drummer kept beating his drum. He could hear a drum being beaten. No object, drums were beating in the distance. Long after the final whistle had blown at their semi-final, the sound of drums beating and fans chatting could be heard outside the stadium. The gold was beaten out into fine strips. Vàng được đánh thành những sợi nhỏ. The metal is beaten into a die. Years ago, you used to be able to walk past the workshops under the West Way from about April onwards and hear the clanging of steel drums being beaten into shape. He started a business that converted scrap titanium from decommissioned missiles into golf clubs, a unique example of beating swords into plowshares. With object, 
beat her competitor in the race for the first time. She beat him easily at chess. We beat them 14 to 3. We beat them soundly or convincingly or comfortably, easily, badly. We beat the pants off them. Lauren easily beat her father five games to one and poked fun at his age and physical fitness. He defeated the Russian who beat him in last year's semi-final to gain sweet revenge and a, the gold medal. There wasn't much shame in that because I thought we competed hard in the four games and we were beaten by a better side. The government's aim is to beat inf inflation. Mục đích, mục tiêu của chính phủ là đẩy lùi lạm phát. The battle to beat car crime. He beat heroin addiction in 1992. The doctor gave him the news that he'd beaten cancer. He said the step to beating poverty was to ensure trade justice, eradicate eradicate debt to poor countries and deliver more aid. He beat his own world record. He cleared 2.68 meters to beat the previous record of 2.67 meters. He was eager as his captain to beat the record. I never imagined that you'd be able to beat this top score like that. Not used in progressive tenses, you can't beat the taste of fresh raspberries. For sheer luxury, you can't beat a nice hot bath. Or for sheer luxury, nothing beats a nice hot bath. Or for sheer luxury, a nice hot bath beats anything. Writing beats walking. Reading beats watching television. Nothing beats it for atmosphere, and the food is fabulous. Nothing quite beats the luxury of soaking in a long hot bath at the end of a tiring day. It beats me how she does it. It beats me how he can do that. It beats me how you manage to work in this heat. With object, they set off early to beat the traffic. They set off early to, to beat the rush hour. He left a little earlier than his usual time to beat the traffic. With object, beat two eggs in a bowl. Beat the butter until light and fluffy. The recipe says you should beat the eggs lightly or thoroughly or well. Without object, her heart beat faster with panic. She could hear her own heart beating. I felt my heart beating faster. With object, the bird was beating, flapping his wings. The bird beat its wings heavily. He beat his powerful wings and soared high into the air, up and away from the village. As I sat to write this essay, I could not help but reflect upon an old saying about a butterfly beating its wings in China and causing a breeze in Oregon. Bây giờ chúng ta sẽ tra một số cụm từ có chứa từ beat. Đầu tiên là beat the heat. Thì 
His favorite way of beating the heat, remaining cool in hot weather, is to have a couple of cold beers. Tiếp theo là cụm từ beat the traffic. We left early so that we could beat the traffic with object. They set off early to beat the traffic. He left a little earlier than his usual time to beat the traffic. Visitors are being urged to get to town early to beat the traffic queues. Living in Dundrum, he found he was getting up earlier and earlier to beat the morning traffic into the city. Tiếp theo là cụm từ heartbeat. I felt my heart beating faster. My heart is beating faster than usual. Her heart started beating hard, pounding against her ribcage. He evidently has a heart the size of a horse, which beats at just 43 times per minute at rest. Ngoài ra, beat còn có các synonyms. Như beat, batter, bellabore, buffet, hammer. Hoặc defeat, conquer, vanquish, beat, root, subdue, subjugate, overcome. Tiếp theo là các idioms. Beat a hasty retreat. Beat around the bush. Stop beating around the bush. Go straight to the point. Đừng nói quanh co nữa, hãy đi thẳng vào vấn đề. Beat it. Và cuối cùng là các phrasal verbs. Beat off or beat out.